guys, welcome to The Rock, Rockford Ordinance. I am Chris, your host, and today we're gonna show you our reloading setup. YouTube doesn't like um, to show reloading, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna show some of the equipment and some of the processes we use and kind of how to get started um, if you're new to it. And uh, since it's deer season, uh, we're reloading some 45 Colt, 45 Long Colt. I thought this would be a good time to do it because the cases are big with big wide mouths, easy to see, and it might be uh, helpful. So uh, I guess we'll start with safety, right? Um, you're dealing with things like primer and gunpowder and uh, they can be dangerous. Uh, you know, people think gunpowder is explosive. It really isn't explosive. It's just got a high burn rate. And uh, if pressurized or kept in a pressurized container when it is being ignited, that's where the explosion comes from. Uh, but it's truly a fast burn. Either way, you want to keep it safe. You want to keep it uh, in a cool, dry place. You want to keep it in sealed containers. Um, keep it away from open flames. And probably not a good idea to smoke while you're doing it. Um, primers, you know, can be stored the same way. Um, other than that, use some common sense. That's about it. So, you can see by this whole jumble here, and it might look like a jumble, but it's not. There's a lot of organization that goes into it, and everything here is useful for something we do. Um, the great thing about reloading is, whether you have a, a big shop, or you've got a corner of an apartment or a closet, you can find the space to reload. Um, you can do a little rolling cart as long as you can bolt that press down solidly uh, you are, or clamp it down you're good to go I've got a little cart over here I've thought about um, using for that to put a single stage on and I could move it around and we very well might do that so it's uh, up to you to be a little creative and figure out where you're gonna put it I could have expanded quite a bit here but uh, I like to keep everything within arm's reach. And I have expanded a bit. Our shotgun reloading is handled on another bench here. This bench used to be utilized for rebuilding motorcycle engines when we were racing. And I repurposed it for this. It's got some good lighting, uh, which is important. So you can see and uh, some drawers for storage and a rack up here. And it, it works out well. I'm getting a little over um, packed here, but We've got some other cabinets here that we can move to when uh, we see fit. So um, I guess the easiest way for a beginner is to probably buy one of the kits that are out there. And they come from a lot of different manufacturers. Um, I chose RCBS simply. I was familiar with them. My father used RCBS. It is probably one of the top um, producers out there. They make really nice stuff. And I went with one of their kits. A kit will save you a little bit of money and kind of give you all the major components you need with just having to buy a couple extra little things to get going. But it'll usually include at a minimum the press, um, a powder drop, although it did not include the arm here. Um, it'll include a scale, um, a loading block, a hand primer, um, a lube tray, and uh, usually like a manual tool that you can put different ends in whoops, to finish your brass in your brass prep. So it, it kind of puts everything in one, saves you a little bit of money, and you only have to add a few other things after that. So what are those other things you may have to add? Well, other than the major components, uh, the press that can deprime, size your brass, load your bullet, all of that good stuff. You've got your powder drop that can uh, enable you to drop the same amount of powder every time into the shell. Um, you've also got your scale so you can set your powder drop and weigh your charges. Uh, your priming, hand priming unit which is, let's see, this, this can prime your units, as can the press. There's a little attachment on most where you can use the press to do it. But uh, mine came with that. It also came with a primer tray. And a primer tray is just that. It holds your primers, 
turn, uh, it's got grooves in it that enable you to shake it and get them all turned to one side and store your primers while you're putting them in. Uh, a lube tray came with it and this is simply for bottleneck cartridges. You lay it on here with some lube, it even came with that and you roll them on there so they don't get stuck in your dies. You have to lubricate rifle cartridges before you um, size them. At least bottleneck cartridges you do. Um, it came with this little uh, hand tool and it comes with uh, little attachments you can put on to deburr the edges of shells so when you're done uh, trimming them or sizing them you can get in there and take the burrs off it. There's a brush attachment you can brush the neck out, what, what have you. Um, as you progress you might end up with other things like this now is our brass prep station so we don't have to do it by hand. It's still manual but they're spinning and you go station to station and it's a lot quicker. Um, the one thing most kids don't include is a trimmer and I'll tell you if you're resizing brass uh, that's not new factory brass uh, you're gonna need a trimmer so there's many different kinds this one happens to be an RCBS it does all different calibers it works out fairly well um, in high volume you might want something with a motor and I've adapted this to run off a drill other than that the rest is kinda you know just what you find useful um, a bullet puller kinetic kinetic bullet puller I believe they call it you can put it in there and if you make a mistake you can whack it a few times and it will uh, pull the bullet out of the shell and you can save the components uh, something to clean your brass uh, we've got a tumbler here that tumbles the brass in, in different types of media and we've also got an ultrasonic cleaner which I'll show you when we get to that part but other than that, that's pretty much the basics and you could pretty much reload anything you want like that. Uh, along the way you may find some gadgets or some other things that may be useful. Um, but for the most part that'll do it. Uh, from there I guess we'll go through kind of the steps of reloading. Okay, so the first step of reloading is prepping brass. And there's a lot of ways to get your brass. You can buy a brand new in the bag, you can have friends save it for you, you can collect it off the ground, a uh, lot of different things. The only thing you might want to be careful about is collecting it off the ground. Sometimes if you're at a range the only reason someone's brass is laying on the ground is because they've reloaded it five or six times and uh, it's junk. So just take a look at it, make sure it's still in good shape. Um, if it has been reloaded or there's signs of it, you may want to uh, find some other brass. But um, don't overlook brass that's really cruddy. This is fairly clean brass. Um, it was given to me by a friend and uh, it's fairly good to go. You'll see the neck has a little bit of uh, you know fouling and whatnot and the brass is tarnished but not bad shape. I've taken some super cruddy stuff and super tarnished stuff and gotten it clean and there's a few ways to do it. You can tumble it with a media like uh, in our tumbler here we use treated corn cob in here and it develops a really high polished finish. Um, this is some 45 Colt that just came out of it. And then we've got a uh, uh, sonic cleaner and there's also wet tumblers that tumble it with uh, water and different types of detergent and stainless steel pins. Um, I haven't done that. It sounds kind of like a mess a little bit but uh, it does work well. Let me show you the ultrasonic cleaner real quick because that's something I've brought in that I find is very useful for heavily, uh, very dirty brass. So here is our RCBS sonic cleaner and uh, there's you know a ton of brands like anything else Hornady makes one. Uh, you can get one at Harbor Freight. The biggest thing I guess I would look for is capacity and then you know quality because the units that put out the sound waves can vary greatly in power kind of hard to 
find out what those power ratings are, but uh, maybe read some reviews or whatnot. This one, I can tell you, works very well. I rarely have to go over 10 minutes in uh, time, as far as treatment time. Uh, we use, uh, I've tried a few different things, Lyman's uh, Turbo Sonic Cleaner, a couple capfuls of that with plain water work well. Um, keep in mind you can do gun parts and guns too in there. You just don't want to use a brass cleaner. You want to come up with either a parts cleaner or even Dawn or something along those lines. You can even do your wife's jewelry in there if you so choose. But fairly simple. It can um, heat it uh, all the way to 140 degrees. Um, it's got timers. It's even got a timer to tell you how long your solution's been in there or been used. And uh, you can up the time all the way to... Uh, 30 minutes or anywhere in between and you can also lower that time between to any number in between comes with a cover and a basket uh, you throw your shells in there drop them in set the timer let it run and I can tell you with very heavily soiled brass uh, 10 minutes is pretty much perfect in anybody's book I have run a couple times a little longer than that but if you run too long, you can start uh, the process of removing uh, some of the metals from the brass. I think maybe it's zinc. It, it can start to turn pink. The nice thing with this is it's got a quick drain. So there's a drain right here and a hose that comes with it. I can drain it right out into a jug and save it if I'm switching cleaners or what have you. But the reason I bought it is I wanted to, I, I hate running um, dirty brass through my nice dyes. You could scratch them, things like that. So I thought for really dirty stuff, I can uh, deprime it with a capping die, toss it all in here and take off the heavy crust, so to speak, or the carbon. Um, it also does a phenomenal job of cleaning the inside of the cartridge. This thing's been shot three times and hopefully maybe you can see in there just how clean the inside of that brass is. I'm telling you, it's like brand new. There is nothing left in there, if you can see. I don't know. Um, it's just super, super clean. But, uh, so two things. It really cleans out the inside and takes off the heavy goop. And it leaves it with a nice satin finish. And then I take it to the uh, tumbler from there and tumble it to get that high shine. I like my brass highly polished and I, it helps in drying it as well. So a couple of different ways to do it. You could do it completely in here. You could do it completely in the tumbler, but dirtier brass takes longer times. You can do it in the uh, tumbler with the, uh, with the brass pins. I'm sorry, I call this a tumbler. It's an ultrasonic. Uh, so a lot of ways to do it. So that uh, takes care of cleaning your brass, which is your first step. So that pretty much handles cleaning your brass, right? You come out with a nice piece of brass. Um, from there, I do the resizing and depriming. If I, if I, I tend to leave my primers in most of the time uh, while I clean it. But uh, from there, it just depends on what I'm using, whether I'm using the Sonic or I'm using the Tumblr. But from there, the next thing would be resizing and depriming. And that's done in one step. So uh, when you get your set of dies, whatever caliber you're using, and you have to buy your dies, they don't come with the kits. Um, rifles are typically two dies and pistols are typically three dies. I've got one in here, one in here, here. So the first die is the decapping die. Hi Maggie, you can't get on camera, can you? Cute little puppy. Anyhow, um, she's bored my son's doggy. She's a good girl. Um, this is your decapping and sizing die. So the nice thing about pistol cartridges is you can get what's called carbide die sets. You don't need to lube your cases which is nice. You don't have to deal with that mess. Um, basically what this does, I'll show you up close. You screw it in your press and there's a pin here that knocks out the primer and as you pull the arm of the press down the case goes up in and it resizes it to factory size. So 
when you have brass that is unsized and you take a bullet uh, it'll drop right into that case once you resize it it uh, won't drop in so all you would do is screw the die down and I'll use this one as an example you just screw the die down there's instructions on how to set them and setting your dies is very important um, with this with pistol dies carbide dies you want to screw it down you'd have this lock ring, ring loosened um, you want to screw it down to where your shell holder just barely misses it so screw it down till it touches it when it's in the down position and then back it off just a hair and then lock it in because you don't want them touching in this particular case in rifles it's different also I failed to mention for each set of dies there's going to be a shell holder uh, it tells you on the front what shell holder to buy they're numbered and uh, you need one for each different type of shell this one happens to be for 45 Colt and you can see it mounts in the press there's a groove in here and the shell slides in there and that's what holds it in the press so you can't go up uh, but you need one for each caliber snaps right in the press like so and that's that uh, once you have your deep priming and sizing uh, die screwed in on this particular press you'll want to put your primer uh, catcher in there and this catches all the old primers as they get popped out I find that it tends to move back on this uh, away from the die and then it, they don't all fall in there so I've got a little piece of rubber I put behind it that keeps it forward so all you would do is put your piece of brass in there pull down it deprimes it and sizes it in one step pure and simple um, from there we go to the next step so we've cleaned our brass we've deprimed it and sized it now is the time to measure your brass because you may need to trim it so one of the things and some kits come with it some don't I use these cheap Harbor Freight calipers you can buy better ones you can go crazy on it but uh, in this application guys it's not you know we're not building rocket ships here well kind of are but <laughs> not that important um, it's close enough so there's a list that is uh, available or you can find it in your reloading manual but I have this neat little list I keep meaning to laminate and put on the wall but it gives all the different calibers and then uh, the trim to length what your shells optimally should be trimmed to uh, size wise and what the maximum is um, I'll tell you that trimming is very important and I like to always keep my shells trimmed to the trim to length but as long as it's in specs you could reload it the problem arises that um, things can be a bit different when you're uh, crimping which we'll get to um, if your case length is differs case to case so the important thing is really have it in spec but have them all the same if they're all the same length that's what's really important so you measure it and in this case uh, 45 long colt should be uh, 1.275 and it is 1.275 on the head that's because I trimmed it but to trim it there's a number of different trimmers you put the shell in there it holds it this adapts to hold any size shell really um, well up until its limits uh, this is brought in you adjust it or set it here with uh, lock uh, screws and there's a little handle that is normally on it this handle right here and you would just crank it I have it set up with a threaded rod I just took my drill to it and it's quicker uh, they do make motorized ones that work very well anyhow once it's uh, once it's sized uh, you're good to go it is a good idea once you have one at perfect size like this one was 
drop it in with your dies because next time you're going to reload that caliber and maybe this was set for 5.56, here's an easy way to set up your trimmer. Put the one you know is the right size, push this forward, adjust, done. Not trial by error. So take a perfect one and drop it in there and keep it in there. It's a good way to go. So that gets uh, your trimming done. Next thing as far as brass prep, and, and brass prep guys is the biggest pain in the rear about reloading. If you can afford new brass and go to town, God, it would be so nice. But <clears throat> most of the reason we reload is because we're trying to save money. So brass prep, that includes trimming, which we just went through, but the majority of it is when you're done trimming, you need to smooth things out, let's say. And there's some steps people do and some they don't. Um, this allows me to set up five different stations, actually uh, seven different stations, but we'll go through what I do on some of them. So I have this set up with a little cutter head that removes, let me get a little closer here guys. I'm sorry guys, there you guys are looking at this stuff and it's so far away I figured I'd get closer. So like your trimmer, I'll show you real quick. You just pop a shell in there. Whoop. Yeah, pop a shell in there and it holds it tight. You'd slide that forward to drill or the handle drive it. Simple as that. There's different um, arbors for the different calibers. Simple as that. As far as the prep goes, I said I had seven different stations here and we do. And I'll start out here because that's where I usually would start with my rifle cases. Um, this is a little um, cutter and this is similar I'll show you here you buy them separately they're just little cutters and uh, this one removes the crimp on military primers so a lot of times military rounds will have uh, there's the primers are staked in essentially there could be two three four stakes around it that hold that primer in from falling out from recoil or whatever really only necessary on uh, because militaries you know checking things twice and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's a real pain to get new primers in if you don't remove that. You'll destroy the primers and all kinds of stuff. So basically all you would do, and that's for a small rifle primer, but you just put it on there and it cuts off that those dimples that are left. So with these, we start here. This is a primer pocket uniformer is what it's called. It makes all the primer pockets the same. So you, it's running like so. You can turn it off because of the noise. But you just drop it on there and it effectively cuts that primer hole perfect. I found it even enhances the uh, roundness of the, uh, the uh, fire hole there. I forget what they call it, which uh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, it makes each primer pocket perfect and cleans it at the same time. Uh, if your primer pocket didn't get clean from cleaning, which in the uh, media tumbling, a lot of times it doesn't. As a matter of fact, the tumbling uh, stuff can stick in there and I use a little pick sometimes to get it out. Uh, Anyhow, this uh, if it doesn't get it clean, you can use wire brush attachments, which are here. You just set it on and wiggle it around, and it'll clean it out of all the carbon. And then once you've trimmed your brass, it leaves burrs around the edge. And you can just put it on here. That um, deburrs and chamfers the inside of the case, so it gives it a little chamfer so the bullet slides in easier. And then this trims... It, de it doesn't trim, it deburrs the outside edge so you got no sharp edges on the outside. You can, with these, you can brush the necks of um, uh, bottleneck cartridges and uh, that's about it. If you didn't want to do this with the big machine, you can do it with the little handheld dealy and here's a handheld trimmer that you can simply twist or twist like so and uh, get it all trimmed up so works pretty well once that's done case uh, prep is finalized
So now that we've got everything trimmed up, cleaned up, ready to go, you essentially have a finished shell. And that's the hardest part of it, guys. Once that's done, the rest is easy. So uh, from there we go to priming, and priming simple. We can either do it on the press, or we can do it with the little handheld jobber. And just real brief, you lay your primers in here, a tray of them. You put the same shell holder in the end here. You slide it in and squeeze, and it primes the shell. It would put a primer in there, and there's a primed one all done, ready to go. Uh, whether it's rifle or pistol, that's how you do it. I'll show you real quick. Let me zoom in on the press so I can show you guys. Sorry if you see a little bumping here, but uh, let's zoom in, shall we? I think uh, right about there will do. Um, so there's a little arm here and basically you flip that over and it goes into the slot here. You lift a little bit, you slide one in and, well first you gotta put a primer in there. Then you lift it up a little bit, slide the shell in and push down. And with a little bit of force, it puts the primer in there. So you can prime from there or the hand primer, whichever you like. So this contraption here, is your powder drop. It holds your powder. You can get different sizes. This holds plenty, enough to do at least a hundred rifle cartridges, maybe more. It's adjusted here. This tells it, uh, you screw it out, it'll put more powder in each one. Less, it'll put less powder. Um, it is graduated. I don't find those too useful. Um, they're not, they, to me, they don't really equate to anything. But uh, there's also these screw in, one for small neck right, uh, cartridges, one for large neck comes with them. This stand is separate, but it enables you to get it up higher and get your tray under it or your bullet under, your shell under it. Uh, so a number of things you can do. Uh, you're going to use your scale. Uh, so you'll set it roughly where you think it should be. Um, you can drop one charge. See the powder came out? You can drop it and uh, put it in your tray and weigh it and adjust until you get to the proper weight. Check two or three, make sure it's dropping evenly and you're good to go. A lot of guys will um, set it a little light so it intentionally drops just a couple grains lighter and then they'll use what's called a powder trickler to trickle that last bit of powder in there. You fill this with powder and you just turn it. And as you turn it, it'll drop just one or two grains in there till you get to the perfect weight and that scale beam is side to side, perfect. And uh, that way each round is exactly on the money. And that's the advantage to, you know, reloading is uh, being able to make each cartridge the same. So here's a close-up of the scale in your powder pan. It goes on just like that. And you uh, weigh your powder charge to make sure it's uh, on the money, what the book says. And uh, you're good to go. I do have another scale next to it uh, that I sometimes use. And I use that just to kind of double check my scale at time to time, from time to time. They also make weights where you can check your zero, make sure you're, you know, zeroing your scale before every use. And uh, that should do it as far as powder charge goes. So to make things easy while you're doing your powder charges and whatnot, and to keep track of them, uh, actually through a lot of the processes, you can use a cartridge block. So this one's set up to hold just about any cartridge. Uh, this side can hold like 10 different kinds and the other side here, if you can see, can hold a bunch of other sizes or calibers. And uh, it's just nice to be able to keep them all here. I can run it under the powder 
uh, drop, you know, one, two, three, four, go back and forth and uh, make sure I get them all done and it keeps them organized. So everything from priming, you know, usually when I prime, I put them in upside down so I can tell they've been primed and then the next stage, etc. So uh, it just works out well to keep them all organized. So now we would have all our powder dropped and uh, we'd be on to the next step and that is seeding the bullet and crimping uh, the cartridge around the bullet in some cases. Okay, with this operation there's an, another die and that is your bullet seating die. Looks like any other die um, open on the inside. There are a couple different inserts that come with the uh, pistol bullets at least, um, depending what kind of pistol bullet you're loading. And they look like this. So this one is for like a flat nose. Uh, it's just flat in there. The one in here is conical, uh, the one that we have screwed in here. And uh, it's very simple. Once we uh, uh, adjust this, it's easy. So you're going to adjust for crimp and crimp is built into the die depending how far your cartridge and I'm just grabbing any old cartridge goes into the die depends how far or how hard it's going to crimp that edge into the bullet um, so that's what you want to adjust first and you can read the directions for that uh, once that's set you're going to adjust bullet depth and that's adjusted with this you screw it in or turn it out and you want to uh, do it to again what the book says your overall cartridge length so you would just screw it in you take your case that has the powder charge slide it in set a bullet on top and run the case up and through and you'll have a finished bullet um, setting the Overall cartridge length is kind of trial by error, so you'd run it up knowing you're doing it a little bit short, take a measurement, screw it down a little further, do it, run another measurement until you get that correct overall length, and you'll be good to go, and you will have a finished cartridge. Um, in this case, there you go. Completely done, ready to roll. Overall guys, it's a pretty simple process. The hardest part is cleaning the brass and prepping the brass. As far as, you know, priming and, and charging it and loading the bullet, that's the easy part and the fun part because you end up with a nice tray of completely loaded, beautiful new bullets, nicer than factory. Um, the thing is, uh, you need to pay attention. You need to not have distractions. Uh, if you make a mistake or think you made a mistake, check it. Double check everything. For instance, when I drop powder, I have a little flashlight here that I look down into each case and make sure, uh, number one, I've dropped powder, number two, it all looks about the same, that I didn't double charge anything, all of that. Always be checking and rechecking. Um, you'll find that you can experiment with 82 different kinds of bullets, uh, 82 different, uh, you know, calibers, uh, different primers, different powders, uh, you name it. And, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll come across different tools that help you do your job better. I've got different trays uh, for different things. Um, little other tools and brushes and funnels and you name it um, you'll kind of develop those as you go along you'll you'll be in the store and you'll find something and you'll say well that looks unique or that'll work um, you'll try all kinds of stuff you, you know there's lead bullets out there you can mold your own bullets you can buy uh, powder coated bullets which are kind of neat um, all kinds of stuff and you know it's cheap I mean usually for bulk bullets uh, even uh, full metal jacket bullets I can pay ten dollars for a hundred you know or even less for powder coated uh, and then way more too if you want match bullets stuff like that but uh, it gets interesting it drags you in and it's a whole nother hobby on top of your hobby but it enhances the first hobby a ton so with deer season coming I wanted something a little hotter than uh, 
what was out there and I know I loaded them and loaded them perfect. We've got these XTP hollow points and we're going to get them things trucking somewhere between 11 and 1200 feet per second and we're going to try and fill our tag. So I thought it was a good time to show you this and uh, if you want some more in-depth stuff ask and I'll get you another video. So, thanks guys for sticking with me. Thanks for watching this. It's a little complicated. I don't normally do this micro stuff up close, so I apologize uh, for any quality issues. But uh, I hope you learned something. I hope it taught you something. If you want more information, simply ask in the comments and I will answer it. I try to answer every comment. So, uh, please like, please subscribe. Um, when you hit the like button, it helps the algorithm. If you hit the I hate it button, it helps the al algorithm. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you set your notifications so you see follow-up videos on it. Uh, we're heading out to the range and we're gonna shoot some of this stuff. So, thanks again guys and as always, Rockford Ordnance 